Sometimes on this journey, I get lost in my mistakes. What well, looks to me like weakness is a canvas for his strength. And my story isn't over, my story's just begun. Well, you won't define me, cause that's what my father does. Well, you won't define me, that's what my father does. Help me out. Ooh, lay your burdens down. Ooh, here in the Father's house, check your shame at the door. You see, they ain't welcome anymore. Bible's not the end game, the journey's where you are. You never want it perfect, you just want it in my heart. And the story isn't over, if the story isn't good. Failure's never final when the Father's in the room. Come on! Failure's never final when the Father's in the room. Ooh. Lay your burdens down Ooh, Here in the Father's house Check your shame at the door Sit and welcome many more Prodigals come home, the helpless find hope. Love is on the move when the father's in the room. Yeah. Prison doors swing wide, the dead come to life. Love is on the move when the father's in the room. Hey! Miracles take place, the cynical find faith. Love is breaking through. When the father's in the room, hey, Jericho walls are quaking, strongholds now are shaking, love is breaking through. When the father's in the room, love is breaking through. When the father's in the room, hey, ooh, lay your burdens down. Check your shame at the door. It ain't welcome anymore. Ooh, you're in the Father's house. How about that? Ooh, lay your burdens down. Ooh, you're in the Father's house. Come on. Check your shame at the door. It ain't welcome anymore. Hey. You're in the Father's house. Good morning. All right. I get in the morning. And we only go for about an hour. We're normally done before noon sometimes, depending upon how. And on the 27th, the security team is meeting. That's a Sunday after church. The 27th, the security team is meeting. We have a memorial service coming up July the 17th, which is a Saturday. Jenny Williams had passed away, and Mike had requested that we do a memorial service for his mom. Jenny was very influential in the beginning of our church in Elwood City with pastors, so it's July the 17th at 1 o'clock here at the church. Don't forget the kids are going to leave uh, right after praise and worship. We have ages 3 to 5, Kathy Ketterer does that. Great job. That's the faith followers, and then... Uh, Share faith followers also grades one to five, grades one to five, and then grades six to 12. There is a leadership meeting today, and we're going to be doing it right after our water baptism, and uh, we're looking forward to being able to do that. And birthdays yesterday was uh, Grace Lintz. She, her birthday was yesterday, it was, was 12. So if you see Grace, wish her a happy birthday. And I think some other guy by the name of Gail Davis's birthday coming too. So yeah, that's enough. Thank you very much. Don't applaud, throw money. That's <laughs> 
Oh, we need to do, we need to stand up and bless God. I, I, I skip, I'll tell you. Father, let's just stand up and let's bless the Lord this morning, you know. Um, bless the Lord, oh my soul. Amen. And all that's within me. And Father, we thank you that your loving kindness are new every morning. And with my lips, I will praise you and give you thanks. I'll make known to you the glorious wonders of your word. And we thank you as you bless us. You give us strength and you give us peace because we're your children. And we bless you for it. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, good morning, everyone. This is the day the Lord has made. We're going to rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Let's do it. We ask you, Lord, to turn our morning into dancing. Here we go. You turn morning to dancing. You get beauty from ashes. You turn shame into glory. You're the only one in You turn morning to dancing. You Amen. Let me uh, start over. You turn morning to dancing. You get beauty from ashes. You turn shame into glory. You're the only one who can. Once again, we say today, you turn morning to dancing. You get beauty for ashes. You turn shame into glory. You're the only one who can. You turn graves. You turn graves into gardens. You turn bones into armies. You turn seas into highways. You're the only one who can. You turn graves into gardens. You turn bones into armies. You turn seas into highways. You're the only one who can. You're the only one who can. Oh, there's nothing better than you. Nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing, nothing is better than you. Sing that again, yeah. Lord, there's nothing better than you. Oh, there's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing. We declare today, nothing is better than you. You turn morning to dancing. You get beauty for ashes. You turn shame into glory. You're the only one who. You turn graves. You turn graves into gardens. You turn bones into armies. You turn. You're the, only, you're the only one who can. You're the only one who can. Sing it out today. You're the only one who can. We believe in Lord. We believe in Lord. Yes, we do, Lord. Yes, we do. Amen, Lord. We believe it. Let 
that praise. The praise be a weapon that silences the enemy. The praise be a weapon that conquers all anxiety. Let it rise. Let praise arise. Hallelujah. We sing it out. We sing your name in the dark and it changes everything. We sing with all we are and we claim your victory. So let it rise. Let praise arise. Yeah. Let's declare it. We'll see you break down every wall. We'll watch the giants fall. Well, fear cannot survive when we praise you. The God of breakthroughs on our side. Forever lift him high. With all creation cry, God, we praise you. Oh, we praise you. And oh, yeah, and faith. The faith be the song that overcomes the raging sea. The faith be the song that calms the storm inside of me. So let it rise. Let faith arise. Oh, let's sing it again with faith in our hearts. We say, let faith. Let faith be the song that overcomes the raging sea. Let faith be the song that calms the storm inside of me. So let it rise. Let faith arise. We declare with our hearts, we'll, we'll see you break down every wall. We'll watch the giants fall. But fear cannot survive when we praise you. The God of breakthroughs on our side, forever lift him high. Your creation cry, God, we praise you. And oh, we praise you. And oh, we praise you. And oh, we praise you. just declare this morning we want heaven to come down let's sing it this is what heaven looks like this is what freedom feels like this is what heaven sounds like we praise you we praise you this is what heaven looks like this is what freedom feels like hey this is what heaven sounds like we praise you yeah, yeah, yeah. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you. We praise you. We'll see you break down every wall. We'll watch the giants fall. But fear cannot survive when we praise you. The God of breakthroughs on our side. Forever lift him high. With all creation cry, God, we praise you. Oh, just praise him, church. Just praise him today. Praise you. Oh, we praise you. And oh, we praise you. And oh, 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 we praise you. Oh, glory to God. Somebody out there has yes, been yes. battling some things, and God told you this morning, when you get in to praise, you're going to be set free. So this morning, right now, let's just enter in because the Bible says there's deliverance in praise. There's strength in praise. Let's lift him up today. Glory to God.
God, that's with us this morning. You are the light. You are the light, the song of my life. You always lead. You are the voice inside. You are my love. No one before you. All that I am points to you. And I was fed by you. And I was fed for you. And I am unfulfilled without full communion. You are the light, the song of my life. You always lead, you are, you are the voice inside. You are my love, no one before you. All that I am points to you. And I was made by you. You made us God, yes you did, yes you did. And I was made for you. And I am unfulfilled without full communion. Sing that again. I was made by you. And I was made by you. And I was made for you. And I am unfulfilled. Without full communion Since your love got a hold of me Since your love got a hold of me I'm a new creation I'm forever changed Since your love got a hold of me Since your love got a hold of me I'm a new creation. I'm for one more time. Yeah. Since your love got a hold of me, since your love got a hold of me, I'm a new creation. I'm forever changed. Since your love got a hold of me, since your love got a hold of me, I'm a new creation. I'm forever changed. I was made by you. And I was made for you. And I am unfulfilled. Yeah. Without full communion. is all I need. You're my breath. You're my life. You're my everything. And you yeah, is all I need. You're my breath. You're my life. You're my everything. And you is all I need. You're my breath. You're my life. You're my everything. And you is all I need. You're my breath. You're my life. You're my everything. And you, and 
you is all I need. You're my breath, you're my life, you're my everything, and you, and you, yeah, is all I need. You're my breath, you're my life. Claret Church. Be the joy of our salvation today, God. <laughs> Be the joy of our salvation, God. And you, yeah, is all I need. You're my breath, you're my life, you're my everything. You're so faithful, Lord. We give you all our cares, all our worries, all our anxieties today, Lord. reach out to him today he's been longing he's been longing to talk with you to fellowship with you he made you for fellowship walking around these walls I thought by now they'd fall but you have never failed me yet. Waiting for change to come. Knowing the battle's won. For you have never Felt be <laughs> Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness. Faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You never failed me yet. I know the night won't last. Your word will come to pass. My heart will sing your praise again. Jesus, you're still enough. Keep 
me within your love my heart will sing your praise again we sing it again your promise still stands great is your faithfulness faithfulness i'm still in your hands this is my confidence you never failed me your promise still stands great is your faithfulness faithfulness your this is my confidence you never failed me yet no you haven't God let's rejoice this morning We've seen it, we've seen it. We've seen you move, God. We believe you move, Lord. I've seen you move. You move the mountains. And I believe I'll see you do it again. Yes, he will. He's done it once. And he's no respecter of persons. If he's healed one, he'll heal, he'll heal you. If he's turned around your situation, he'll do it for someone else too. God's a faithful God, isn't he? And I want to encourage you today, enter in with your spirit man. Hook up with the Holy Ghost today. God's got something special for you today. You're only one prayer away from a miracle. Do you believe it today? Come on, praise him for it. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you that you're a miracle-working God. We thank you that you are the same yesterday and today and forever. And no man comes to the Father but through Jesus, the miracle worker. Thank you that the miracle worker is here. The angels of God are here. We thank you that the Holy Spirit is here. And we thank you for a flow and a move of the Spirit. Right now, there's people being touched right now in Jesus' name. Lift your hand to heaven and say, yes, I receive my miracle in Jesus' name. That's it. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Oh, yes. You don't have to wait on the stirring of the waters. <laughs> like the man in John chapter 5, just lift your hands to heaven and say, yes, Lord, it's already been done at Calvary. You've already released your power on my behalf, and I receive it right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Someone right now, their elbow is being healed. I don't know who it is, but just receive it right now. Somebody's knee, too. In Jesus' name, just check that knee and begin to move it a little bit. And there's mobility there that wasn't there before. Thank you, Father, for someone's back being touched right now in Jesus' name. Thank you for it, Father. Oh, we bless you, Father. Go ahead and move a little bit. Just move around and twist a little bit. Don't twist and shout like Chubby Checker, but just move around and twist a little bit there, and you'll see that you're set free in Jesus' name. That's it. Apply some action now. Apply some action to it. Because faith without corresponding action is dead being alone. That's it. 
just well, as you're acting in faith, it'll, it'll, it'll come. There's a song that says, faith gives action to the power. Have you ever heard that song? Faith gives action to the power. Faith gives action to the power. Move your faith. Use your faith to get God's power. You'll be healed this very hour. You want to sing? Faith gives action to the power. Faith gives action to the power. Use your faith to get God's power. You'll be healed this very hour. You did well for the first time. Come on, praise him for it. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Good to see you today. How many have come expecting today? Amen. God's got something for every single person that when you walk out of here, you're going to be different than when you walked in. Amen. Amen. Give someone a virtual fist bump there and tell them Jesus loves you today. Good to see all of you. We like to get literature into your hands. It will help you. Just keep you informed. Rushers, if you would, help us with this this morning. We'll pass these out. Thank you, brother. Thank you, Ken. Get some more here. You can give Brenda some in there, too. All right. And... Uh, you know what? We might as well pass these out, too. We've got some four other guys that can help us with these. <laughs> these are questions that you can use to help bond with your spouse. So be sure to take one of these. It's called Conversational Questions to Ask Your Spouse. And uh, what it does is just facilitate some communication time between you and your spouse. So if I see something that I think will help you, I get it run off. And Rhonda runs it off for us, and it's a blessing. Amen. Well, we wanted to get those things in your hand. We're going to take back America. Don't forget that take back America campaign. Be sure to pray according to Second Chronicles 7, 14, and call your senators. And you know it's Pastor Gail's birthday today, right? Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. It's good to be 29, isn't it, brother? Amen. Hallelujah. Hey, be, be sure to get hold of Pastor Matt's CD for his teaching from Wednesday night. What was the title of that again, Matt? That was a good one. How to Have a Teflon Heart. How to Have a Teflon Heart. In other words, offenses come, but you can let them bounce right off of you like Teflon. Amen. It doesn't stick. It doesn't stick. That's right. Amen. So be sure to get that one. And um, also... We'll go ahead and dismiss the young people now. Thanks for our people that are working with our youth. And we're going to do a water baptism here in just a little bit. And uh, we have some people lined up to be water baptized. But if you decided, hey, just on the spur of the moment, I want to be water baptized. But we'll do that for you. I don't know where you're going to get some dry clothes, but we'll, <laughs> we'll go ahead and water baptize you anyhow. Amen. I'm going to read out of Deuteronomy today. In Deuteronomy chapter 14, and beginning with verse 22, the Bible says, Thou shalt truly tithe all the increase of thy seed, that the field bringeth forth year by year. So what they did back then is took one-tenth of their seed, and they sowed that to God right off the top. They didn't wait to see how much they needed for their own food, but they ra rather just sowed it right off the top, the 10% to God. And thou shalt eat before the Lord thy God in this place where sh shall, he shall choose to place his name there, the tithe of the corn, of, the of thy wine and thine oil, and the firstlings of thy herds and of thy flocks, that thou mayest learn to fear the Lord thy God always. But see, when you're fearing the Lord, that means you have a reverence for him and you have a reverence for his word. And so as you have this reverence, you're going to say, yes, I want to do what God's telling us to do, and so to the Lord, and tithe, amen, all right, let's go ahead and do that today, and ushers, if you would go ahead and distribute the envelopes there that uh, will, you can be sure to mark on them what you want to sow to, and you might want to sow to our roof fund, we have about uh, $8,200 in our roof fund right now, and uh, so we're going to put a new roof on this place. Amen. 
Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the provision for that. Amen. Hallelujah. And you can be turning in your Bibles to Romans chapter 6. If you like, Romans chapter 6. All right, ushers, if you're all ready, we'll go ahead and pray. Brother, pray. Dear yeah, Lord, we just thank you for these tithes and offerings. We ask him to use them for your glory. Let us spread the goodness of the gospel. Bless the gift to give her like. It's in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise God. Those of you who are going to help out with water baptism, you can go ahead and mosey on over into that area right over there. Those of you who are going to be water baptized, we'll meet you over by those chairs. Let's praise him today. It's a new horizon, and I'm set on you. And you meet me here today. All my fears and doubts, they can all come to because they can't stay long when I'm here with you. It's a new horizon, and I'm set on you. And you meet me here today. With mercies that are new All my fears and doubts They can all come to Because they can't stay long Believe you are the way The truth The life I believe you are the way The truth, yes you are the life I believe you are it's a new horizon and I'm set on you and you meet me here today with mercies that are new all my fears and doubts they can all come to because they can't stay long when I believe you are the way the truth of the lie I believe you are the way the truth of the lie and I believe you are we believe you Yes, we believe that you are. He that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them who diligently seek him. How many believe God is a rewarder? Yeah. And we can diligently seek him. Amen. The Bible says he will not forsake those who seek him in Psalm 92. And another good scripture is the one in Lamentations 325 that says, The Lord is good to those who wait upon him and to the soul that seeketh him. And these are people that are seeking God today. They've made a decision to make Jesus the Lord of their lives. And now it's time to identify with Jesus through water baptism. You say, what's that all about? Basically, once you've made Jesus the Lord of your life, you're born again. And when that happens now, there's something has already transpired inside of you. You become a new creation in Christ. You have a regenerated spirit. He says, I'll take out that old stony heart and I'll replace it with a heart of flesh. And so he, a new spirit he puts within you, a new heart he gives you, and a new spirit he plays with the, places within you. But so this, what we're going to do here is basically an outward demonstration of something that's already transpired inwardly. In Romans chapter 6, the Bible tells us, since we have died to sin, how can we continue to live in it? Or have we forgotten have you forgotten that when we become, we became Christians and were baptized, let's see, to become one with Christ Jesus, we died with him. And so that's what happens. When, you're, when you go down in the water, you die with Jesus. When he died, it's a vicarious experience, see? That's how we identify with him in his death, in his burial, and in his resurrection. And it goes on to say, 
For we died and were buried with Christ by baptism. And just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glorious power of the Father, we also may, be, may live new lives. We're raised up with him. Amen. So, first person here that I think is going to be water baptized is Rochelle. Come here just a minute, honey. Hi. Rochelle, God's done some awesome things in your life, honey. Tell us what, what he's done. Um, I was an addict, and I was out in the street for over 50 years. And I came to this church, and the day I walked in this church, something hit me, you know, it just... A spirit came all over me, and I start changing. These things, I just didn't feel like the same person in the streets anymore. And I start praying to God, told him I wanted to change my life. Awesome. And I start having pains in my body, and every time I came to this church, I the pain would go away, and I was able to do things that I couldn't do before I walked in. And I said, there's something different here. You know, this is where I'm supposed to be. And... Um, the people who brought me here has been a blessing in my life. They haven't left me. They didn't, even though they knew I was struggling, they never turned their back on me, and I'm grateful for that. And um, I'm just... You're in love with Jesus, I can tell. I'm in love with Jesus now. <laughs> I mean, he's changed my heart. Oh, glory to God. That's awesome. Glory to God. We love you, honey. Go ahead and help her up there, if you would. This is really nice. Matt, where are you? You're just going to tell them what, what we're doing here with this. Oh, look at this. This is wonderful. Praise God. If you'd stretch your hand toward her. But, yeah, that's it. Turn and face this way. I would say turn right down that way. That's it. That's it. Yeah, yeah that's it. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we baptize Michelle in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Awesome. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. She's a sweetheart. I tell you, she just is on fire. These guys are doing a good job. And Dave and Pam Fisher put this covering on here. Isn't that nice? And, and these, these yellow, the, the, it's being glued and the glue's drying, so these yellow uh, belts will come off. And, boy, they did a nice job. Come on, let's thank God for Dave and Pam and yeah. doing that for us. Appreciate it so much. All right, who's next here? Let's see who's next here. Hi, Vienna. I saw you yesterday at the picnic, yeah. the party. Say something about Jesus. I know you love him. Yeah. When my mom saw uh, this video on Facebook, she said to go in the church. And um, um, And that's how you got here. Yeah, and, and it's just a blessing to be here. We, we, we love all you. Oh, we love you too, honey. And I know you love Jesus too, don't you? Yeah. You invited him into your heart to be Lord of your life. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Well, come on up here then, and we'll get you water baptized then. This is Vienna, Lord, L-O-H-R. She's a sweetheart. She's in, going into fifth grade. Yes. Amen. And she loves Jesus. Eleven years old, pretty soon be twelve. Awesome. Okay. Did you know that this is Okay. Okay, we baptize Vienna. We're gonna get her together here. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Glory to God. Yes. Amen. Good job, guys. And Dora Lee, I'll tell you, this lady right here is a word woman. She loves the word of God. And you were telling me the other day that you just soak up the word every day. I do. Just meditate it on, on it all the time. What's it do for you, honey? Um, I just like, 
have a family. I have a husband, and I love my church family. We love you too, honey. And they do have a precious family. Her husband was already water baptized. Dorley, I know you love Jesus, don't you? Yes. Awesome. Well, you can go right up there. Amen. It's like any swimming pool. Once you get in there, you get warm, but it takes, it takes a minute or two. <laughs> You're going to make it. It'll be fine. That a girl. Good for you. All righty. They had a wonderful birthday party for their son, Salvatore, yesterday at Ewing Park. And uh, just a precious family that loves God. Well, hold on to well, Hold on to her. There you go. All right. All right. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we baptize you, Dorothy. Awesome. Glory to God. Yes. And each one of them will get a shirt and a, and a certificate. Thank you guys so much. Uh, the last time, Pastor Gill took a bath with them. He, he, but he's all right today. All right. They've done some modifications to our tank, and now it's got lights in it, and it's got a circulation system, and so it's very, very nice. All right, I'm going to trade mics. We had to borrow other churches to do this. But, uh, hey, do we have a, a video clip back there to show? It's a trailer of a movie about a little girl who believes in miracles. I want you to see this this morning. This is a trailer for an upcoming Christian movie. Take a look at it. Grandpa, when I found the bird, I prayed. Kai, we made this poor little Kai, so maybe you can help him out. Partisan beating, sir, and is that... Then... I saw God standing on the other side of the lake. I always thought that you were kind of special. You see him? Who? God. You saw God and then brought a dead bird back to life. No, I didn't. God did. Where'd you get this? I drew it when I came home tonight. You drew this? just sounds like she has a healthy imagination to me. She would never outright lie. My cat died last week. I was wondering if you could stop by and bring it back to life. Mom, it really was God. Sir, do you think you can help me walk again? I don't know. Could you say a prayer for me? So, tell me what this medical emergency is all about. I moved my toes this morning. I can't explain what, what happened in there. Severed nerves and spinal cord can't regenerate. Mom? I thought he was never supposed to walk again. He wasn't. It was Sarah. I keep fighting voices in my mind. It's not a healthy affair for other people to pretend that you're actually having conversations with God. I'm not pretending. Is Sarah Hopkins a miracle worker? It's about to turn her world upside down. I don't think I can take this much excitement. Yeah, hold on to your hat. There's going to be a lot more of it. Dad? People want Sarah. Thank you. I know that I was seeing God. Everything Sarah told us was true. I'm just a lucky girl who God decided to visit. The truth is, all you have to do is believe in God and pray to Him. He's listening. This one is just sweeter than chocolate. We encourage you to go see that movie, and what we want to do is promote Christian 
movies. You know, the secular movies are trash, aren't they? Let's face it. But uh, there's a group, the AMC movie theaters are showing Christian movies, and we as Christians need to get behind them and support them, okay? This is a good one here, and I thought I'd just mention that to you because uh, they need our support. The other reason I wanted to show it to you is because it leads right into my message today, which has to do with living out of your spirit, man. Living out of your spirit. The Bible tells us to be filled with the Spirit in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18. Be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart unto the Lord. Now, it goes on to say in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, and verse 23, it says, I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless under the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. In that scripture, it describes mankind and what his makeup is. And it is spirit, soul, and body. You've heard me teach about this before. You are a spirit, you possess a soul, and you live in a body. And so I have my famous circles here again. You are a spirit. You, excuse me, yeah, you are a spirit. You have a soul, and you live in a body. Okay, you're a three-part being. God is a triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and you are a tripart being. And this is the part we said before that you can rely on because this is the part of you that got regenerated, your spirit man. This is where you became a new creation in Christ, where you're brand new. Now, the body and the feelings that we have, they fluctuate. And they're not reliable, are they? Why? Because they didn't get born again. You were born again in your spirit. So the Bible says in Romans 7, 18, there is no good thing in my flesh. And we have to recognize that, that our flesh is fickle. Our flesh and our feelings, we can't rely on them. Okay? And really the same thing with our soulish man. Before our mind gets renewed, our so by the way, the soul is the mind, the will, and the emotions. Okay, the mind, the will, and the emotions. This is the center for our emotions. This is where we make decisions, right? But this part didn't get born again either. Now, there's hope for the soul because it says in James 1.21, receiving with meekness the engrafted word to the saving of your soul. Well, how's your soul get saved? It's, it gets saved by putting the Word of God into it. It gets saved by renewing your mind. Romans 12, 2 tells us that. that. Don't be fashioned after this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. But uh, unfortunately, those two areas, I mean, you can't really rely on your emotions, can you? Your emotions fluctuate from day to day. Man, if you follow your emotions, I mean, they can be up and down and up and down. If you make decisions based on emotions, why, you could be in big trouble. So we've got to be aware of that. And what, what do we want, want to do? We want to make decisions based on the direction of the Holy Spirit in our spirit. In other words, we want to learn to live out of our spirit, man. That's where we're going to see the greatest triumphs. And in the case of this little girl in this movie that believes in miracles, she has learned to somehow live out of her spirit in order to connect with God. And you and I as Christians need to get a hold of this too. We're not going to live out of our soulish man. We're not going to live out of our body, out of our flesh and our feelings and our emotions because they're fickle, but rather we live out of our spirit man. We are directed by our spirit, aren't we? And see, when we do that, we're going we're gonna to be able to walk in love and and make all sorts of good decisions in life because we are, once again, a spirit. We possess a soul, and we live in a body. The neat thing about our spirit is the Bible says in Romans 5, 5, that he shed abroad in our hearts. By the way, the heart is the same thing. The inner man, the, the uh, uh, inner man, the hidden man of the heart, the spirit, it's all the same thing, okay? And so in your spirit, man, that's where the love of God has been shed abroad in your heart. And so it's the love that we need to allow rise to the ascendancy and direct our lives. We've been talking a lot about the taking on the thinking of a champion. Think like a champion. And see, a champion is going to be someone who has learned to live out of their spirit and not just make decisions and choices in life, determinations based on emotions and based on feelings, but rather 
We're going to learn to live out of our spirit. And that's where we're going to triumph. And that's where, and, and by the way, the Bible talks about the works of the flesh in Galatians 5, 19. And in fact, you can take a look there. Galatians, because we're going to flip over to that. Galatians 5 and 19. So for those of you who have been water baptized today, this is a good message because now you have identified with Jesus through his death, his burial, and his resurrection, and now we can learn to walk after the Spirit. We can learn to live out of our recreated human spirit, and that's where we're going to see the the good things happen. It says in Galatians 5, 19, it says, Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, which is a lack of restraint in our lives, okay, Uh, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, which is strife, emulations, which is jealousy and envy and so forth, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, which is just rioting, all right? Uh, Such like, it says, of which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So we don't want to live after the flesh. By the way, you saw there that anger is even a work of the flesh. Somebody's got a temper. Well, it's just a work of the flesh. That's all that is. And you can learn to control that by letting your spirit, man, let the love rise to the ascendancy and dominate that anger and that flesh. I can tell you, I used to have a bad temper, and it's gone. Amen. Not that I don't want to get angry sometimes. I may, but that's my flesh, and I've realized how to... Control that, see? And you can, too, when we learn to live after the flesh, or live after the Spirit, walk after the Spirit. And, you know, it's so important in this last day. Look at while you're at Galatians. Go over there to uh, verse 13. It says, For brethren, this is Galatians 5, 13, For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. See, by love that's in your spirit, man, we serve one another. That love's not necessarily in your flesh or your emotions. It's divine love is in your spirit, see. And by the way, natural human love won't hold a marriage together. It takes divine love to really make it work. Verse 14, for all the laws fulfilled in one word, even this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Now listen to this. But, here's the contrary part. But if ye bite and devour one another, take heed that ye be not consumed one of another. See, if you lean to the flesh, you're going to bite and devour one another and we get into hatred and all this sort of thing. And I told you before that in the end times, the Bible says because iniquity is abounding, the love of many is going to wax cold. It's going to diminish. God's love is going to diminish in this world. And you and I have to maintain that love. Regardless of what the world does, we have to keep that love at a high level. Isn't that right? And stay in the love of God and live out of our spirit, man. And so that's so important, isn't it? So uh, we can pray in the spirit, see, and get over there in that spiritual realm, see. We can pray in the spirit, and what's going to happen, that love will rise up and dominate in every decision that we make. Now look at verse 16. It says, Then I say... This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Walk in the Spirit. Live out of your spirit, in other words. Walk in that Spirit, and you'll not fulfill the lust of the flesh. And one translation says it this way. Walk, live habitually in the Spirit, and you'll not fulfill the lust of the flesh. In other words, we want to get out of that natural carnal realm and we want to get over there into that spiritual realm and walk after the Spirit and live out of our recreated human spirit. Amen? How many think that's a good idea? So living out of your spirit will not only help you to walk in love, but it will also enable you to have the direction that you need for every decision, every choice that you make in life in the whole decision-making process. And by the way, we all face many decisions all the time, don't we? And, and many of those decisions, God leaves up to us. He doesn't care about what, you know, whether you eat an apple or an orange or particularly or you know, which hotel you stay in or 
you know, he, he doesn't really care too much about some of these things. But you can pray. You can always pray a prayer. Okay, God, what's best for me? The apple or the orange right now? Oh, I need some vitamin C. Okay, I'll eat the orange then. Or you can say, God, I know you don't really care in, in this instance whether I buy uh, vegetable beef soup or chicken noodle soup, but which would be best for me right now? You know, you can ask God, and He'll lead you right in your spirit. The direction from God comes in your spirit, not in your body. Well, I just felt this about God. Not in your soul. I just had this emotion. No, that's not how God leads us. He leads you in your spirit, man, in your recreated human spirit right down here by following peace and so forth. So we can make the proper decisions then that we need to make and the choices, you know, on vacation, when you go on vacation, uh, it may not matter exactly, you know, how you get there. But then right on the other hand, if you're going to go to the beach, should I take the northern route to Delaware or should I take the southern route to Delaware? Well, God knows where the, the jam-ups are. He knows where the construction is <laughs> and where the heavy traffic is. And so he can let you know, can't he, if we learn to live out of our spirit. Oh, I'm telling you, church, we're missing out on so much if we don't learn to live out of our spirit. Isn't that right? Um, so, or, or which hotel to stay at, what have you. But he knows so much. He, he's a genius, and he will let us know. And uh, put that picture up there, if you want to, that parking meter guy. It's like me having to use these newfangled parking meters. Now, I'm not a high-tech guy. I have to have my grandchildren uh, fix my... Uh, the phone for me, all right? And, uh, but I had to play with this for a while until I finally got used to, to using it. Well, one day I come out, and then my, my car had a ticket on it, a $30 ticket. Would you believe that? And so, you know, it's like right down here, go talk to that policeman over there. I, so I went and saw a policeman, and he says, well, I don't give those tickets. That's another group of policemen that give those. He says, but you can call City Hall and tell them about it. So I did. I called him up, and they, the city hall was just a couple of blocks away. $30 ticket. And I, saw, I said, I, I went over there, and I had all with the receipts and everything else, and I showed him, and they said, well, you're absolutely right. It says right on here that your time was good to 101, and uh, here it's, uh, they ticketed you at 11.54 a.m. So you're absolutely right. We'll void this ticket, and I saved 30 bucks. Okay. All right, praise the Lord. Anyhow, my wife is happy with that. She went and bought something new with the 30, 30 bucks. <laughs> so you see, being led by the Spirit <laughs> can give you a great advantage in your life. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, the Bible tells us that we can live in the natural or we can be spiritual. We can be natural people or we can be spiritual people. We can be natural and live out of the flesh and out of the emotions, or, or we can be spiritual and we can live out of our spirit. And that's what it says there in 1 Corinthians 2.15. It says, but he that is spiritual judges or evaluates. Some translation says he discerns all things. He that is spiritual discerns all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. Well, what's that mean? Well, if I live out of my flesh or out of my soulish man, I'm not going to have the, the advantage here. But if I can live out of my spirit man and hook up and walk after the spirit, I'm going to judge or evaluate or discern all things. I'm going to have some insights, amen, that the Holy Spirit's going to give me. And so it goes on to say, For who hath known the mind of the Lord, he, that he may instruct him... But we have the mind of Christ. Everybody say that with me. We have the mind of Christ. Where do you have the mind of Christ? Right down here in your spirit. You have the mind of Christ right down here. Well, how do I get it up there where it does me some good? By living out of your spirit, you see. How many of you hooking up with me today? Do you see that? You're getting a download from heaven on this? <laughs> Amen. Is it registering with you? that we live out of our spirit and so much more can be done. And we're going to have a much greater impact when we, we're able to discern things and evaluate things by living out of our spirit, man. We can tap the mind of Christ. Uh, and and we, we actually what it means is we're kind of tuned in on God's frequency. Would you say so? Yeah, I like 
Just like the pilots say, how do you hear me? Five by five. What's that mean? I'm hearing you loud and clear, okay? Well, you're tuned in. You've got the right frequency. And we don't need to miss the leading of the Spirit all the time. We can have a good batting average. Now, we all miss it once in a while. I remember one time I was driving. I thought I was driving north on Route 1, and we were driving for a while, and I realized, my goodness, I'm going the wrong way. And I'd turn around and go back north. I was going one to go north on Route 1. So anyhow, we all miss it once in a while. But as we learn to live out of our spirit, our batting average will get better. All right? You know what I mean by your batting average? It'll get better, won't it? When we learn to live out of our spirit, man, and listen to what the Lord is telling us. Because once again, He speaks to you where? In your spirit. Amen. We can say the right things, do the right things, make the right decisions, and live like a champion and stop missing God and winding up in disaster after disaster. Well, go to Deuteronomy with me. Deuteronomy chapter 30. Deuteronomy chapter 30 and verse 19. Deuteronomy 30, 19 says, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life, that thou and thy seed, that your children, may live, that thou mayest love the Lord thy God, that thou mayest obey his voice, and that thou mayest cleave unto him, for he is thy life and the length of thy days. Glory to God. I believe the living after the Spirit we want to lengthen your days. Sure, because God's going to tell you, don't eat that, or you better do this, or you better exercise, or you better stop doing this, or what have you. You know, God will lead you so that it will actually produce longer life. Do you see how the leading of the Spirit helps so much? And you see, the way we do that is we just pray in the Spirit, get hooked up, and we choose life. We follow peace in our gut. It's, it's not hard. The Bible says in Colossians, well, it says in, in Isaiah 55, 12, it says we can be uh, led forth with peace. How's it go? Uh, they shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills and so forth. But we can be led by peace. Colossians 3, 15 says let the peace of God rule in your heart. So we can just follow peace. You have peace about this college? That's the one you're supposed to go to. If you have a check in your spirit about this college, don't go to that one. All right? Or this restaurant or that restaurant or buying a car. <laughs> you don't want to get a lemon. If you have a check in your spirit about buying this car, don't buy it. Wait and follow peace. We're talking about living out of your spirit. This is how you get direction from God. So we follow peace. Anyhow. Remember this, too, that the Spirit will always, always, always agree with the Word of God. The Holy Spirit will never direct you to do something dumb that contradicts the Word of God, right? Hey, man, I heard Willie George giving an example. He said in his church he had a, had a couple that really hooked up spiritually together. You know, a, a guy and a gal in prayer and so forth, they really hooked up together spiritually. He said, the only problem is they were each married to somebody else, but they wanted to be together. So they were praying that their spouses would die so they could get together. How many of you know that's not the Word of God? <laughs> that's pretty goofy, isn't it? <laughs> See, the Word of God will never disagree, or the Spirit of God will never disagree with, with the Word of God, okay? So, anyhow... Uh, you can make the right decisions regarding your children, regarding the Word. Follow. I'm telling you, read the book of Proverbs. That's great. It's loaded with great stuff in it for raising children. Uh, your marriage, all of those things. Uh, how to get that unbelieving husband to move over into that spiritual realm. Or how to get, meet that, get that unbelieving wife to move over into that spiritual realm and, and desire the things of God according to Matthew 5, 6. So it behooves us, you see, to live out of our spirit. We can at any given moment detach from that natural carnal realm and tap into the spiritual realm. And the way we do it is by praying in the spirit. Get your spirit hooked up to the Holy Spirit. 
And see, before every service, I pray in the Spirit for a while to get my spirit hooked up to the Holy Spirit. So, because you don't want to hear from my head. You don't want to hear from my intellect. You don't want to hear from my soul. You want to hear what God wants to say through my spirit, right? Amen. And so, you can do the same thing. You can pray in the Spirit and get hooked up and make the right decisions. And so... uh, and when that happens, see, you're going to see miracles. You're going to see demonstrations of the Spirit when you get hooked up that way. Sometimes, church, we're just living in the, too much in the natural. But we can live like champions. And that's what we've been talking about lately, living like a champion. And, uh, well, I think I'm just going to stop right there, and we'll pick up some more of this on Wednesday night. But many of you may have, ha- have made wrong decisions and had, had uh, disappointments in life and and uh, made a wrong turn or made a wrong choice, maybe uh, whatever. But I want you to know God can bring you back. A champion can always come back from a disappointment. Amen. Jesus gives us the wherewithal to recover and face the real culprit, which is the devil, head on with determination. (laughs) Amen. You may have experienced a recent setback in life, but His awesome love and His presence The presence of the Holy Spirit surrounding you will bring restoration and healing and total transformation to your life, give you a brand new start, help you to start all over again. Do you believe it today? Amen. Amen. He'll heal your emotions with His love, allowing you to go on in life with a determination. And He can make lemonade out of lemons. Do you believe that? (laughs) Hallelujah. Let's stand this morning. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That's what the Lord can do. So allow Him to make you whole. He has a Holy Ghost rehab for anybody who's made mistakes. Amen. So you can get back on your feet again. He's in the business of giving you a new beginning. He'll restore your soul. Just like Rachel was telling us today, how God just restored her so beautifully. Jesus is awesome, isn't He, Rachel? Awesome. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He'll make you a force to be reckoned with concerning the devil, too, to deliver a a punch of defeat (laughs) where he's concerned. Glory to God. He'll heal every scar, every wound from your past disappointments and make you stronger than ever. Amen. So, Father, we bless you today. We thank you for your supernatural power, Lord. Help us to learn to live after the Spirit to live out of our recreated human spirit, Father, so that we can live victoriously, Father, so we can walk in love. You know, we're talking about uh, having the mind of a champion. Well, Jesus is the champion of our salvation, isn't he? And it says in Philippians, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. What is the mind of Christ? It's love, isn't it? Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Read the verses around that scripture. You'll find it has to do with God's love, to staying in love, glory to God, not getting out of love for any reason, for anyone, anytime, anywhere. I'm sure you've wanted to deck somebody a time or two, and so have I. (laughs) But you see, we can let the, uh, the spirit man rise to the ascendancy and live out of this wonderful love and have the mind of Christ. Isn't that the mind of love? Hallelujah. Well, let's praise Him as we go today. Glory to God. He is worthy. Glory. Come on, let's sing it now. Let's praise Him. Calling me over. You're pulling me close With love you surround me You give me hope Yeah, yeah, yeah Yeah, you're taking me deeper You're making me with grace you redeem me, yeah. You restore my soul. Now I'm made new because 
give you an opportunity to make Jesus the Lord of your life so that you can experience water baptism and then moving on to grow in the Lord and live out of your spirit. Let's pray this prayer right now. Seal that deal because the Bible says he that is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. You become in union with Christ the moment you pray this prayer and ask him to be the Lord of your life. Let's all pray this together. Those of you watching at home, pray it as well. Say, Heavenly Father, I believe with all my heart you are the Son of God. There is no way to heaven apart from you. Jesus, come into my heart. Be the Lord of my life. Thank you for forgiving me of all my past sins. Thank you for loving me, for saving me. In Jesus' name, hallelujah, you're a new creation in Christ. Give Jesus a hand. Glory to God. Hey, don't forget our leadership meeting right over here. Be a brief one. Let's praise him as we go. Glory. You are dismissed. And you are my salvation. I will not fear, no. You're the strength of my life. I won't fear. Sing it again. You are my salvation. I will not fear. You're the strength of my life. I won't fear. You hold my head up, hold my. You remind me who I am. You hold my head up. I'm alive in you again. I'm made new. I'm made anew. Oh. You hold my head up. A church that believes in rescuing the lost and transforming lives by the love of Jesus. That's right. That's what we're all about. That's why we call our vision Operation Saturation. We want to saturate this area with the Word of God so that people will come to know Jesus. But anyhow, we want you to know that uh, this is a good time to make Jesus the Lord of your life. And just pray this prayer. Say, Heavenly Father, I believe with all my heart that Jesus is the Son of God. I know He died for my sins. He was raised from the dead to justify me. Jesus, come into my heart. Be the Lord of my life. And I'll serve you forever. Thank you, Jesus, that I'm saved. You've made me righteous by your precious blood. So, get plugged into a local church and a good church, one that preaches the word of God and not pablum or three points in a poem. Amen? And so, also, 
If you want to, come by, see us on Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. We have service at 10 o'clock and Wednesday nights at 7 o'clock and you'll be blessed. And if you don't, you know, if you live far away, maybe you want to find a church where, where you're living. So give us a call at 724-752-9575 and we will plug you into a good church in your community, wherever that is. And so share this with your friends, your relatives, your co-workers. Tell them what's going on so they can watch on Facebook Live every time we have a service. And remember this, Jesus loves you and has a wonderful plan for your life. Amen. God bless you.